Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Working Together on Think Tech Hawaii, where we discuss the impact of change on workers, employers, and the economy. I'm your host, Cheryl Crozier Garcia, inviting you to join in the conversation. Please call us with your questions or comments at area code 808-374-2014 or tweet us at thinktechhi. Relationships between nations have significant impacts on the world economy. This has been seen recently as the White House continues to discuss the on-again, off-again summit with North Korea, which may or may not happen in Singapore on June 12th, just one week from today. Does this keep them guessing approach to diplomacy help or hurt our relationship with North Korea? What does the rest of the world think of the U.S.'s ability to keep its promises when the executive branch can't seem to make up its mind? Dr. Daewoo Park is joining us today to discuss the current state of the U.S.-North Korea relationship and the impact of that relationship on the Korean Peninsula and the rest of the world. Welcome, Daewoo. Yeah, thank you. And thank you for joining us today. Yeah. Um, we've been hearing a lot in news media about President Trump wanting to go to North Korea, uh, and the, the Kim Jong-un administration has seemed willing to make that meeting happen. But there's been so much kind of on and off and mind changing and yeah. negotiating back and forth that we really don't know where we stand in, in terms of that meeting and perhaps the ongoing relationship with North Korea. How do you think Pyongyang responds to this kind of on again, off again uh, negotiation and and um, uh, trash talking? Uh, according to many reports uh, I have read and I have heard from uh, since last year, uh, they North Korea they believe they finished the development of nuclear uh, arms and missiles uh, by the end of 2017. So. Uh, last year, they already announced uh, 2018 will be the year of diplomacy, and so they want to be recognized by U.S. and other countries. Uh, they are nuclear power, just like India and Pakistan. So they already announced uh, we want to follow the, uh, India and Pakistan in the 70s and 80s. So do not talk about uh, the nuclear arms, the, mis uh, the weapons. Uh, let's just try to uh, have uh, diplomatic uh, discussions and a uh, possibility of reducing the number of nuclear weapons, not uh, completely eliminating the nuclear weapons. Mm -hmm. And so uh, 2018, uh, at the beginning of 2018, the Winter Olympic Games, mm -hmm. great uh, moment for North Korea to start the diplomatic discussion with U.S. and uh, South Korea and Japan and also China. Mm -hmm. And. So they're not interested in complete denuclearization. They'd like to hold on to what they have and maybe just not build any more, yeah, right. which is essentially what India and Pakistan did in, in the 70s and 80s. Uh, but the U.S. has continued to have some challenging relationships, say, with Pakistan uh, when it comes to things like allegedly uh, providing uh, sanctuary to terrorist groups and things like that. Does Pyongyang have those same kinds of challenges? Could they be in a position to, although they're not building more nuclear weapons, uh, continue to have, say, relations with the United States that would uh, be problematic if they chose to support, say, different factions yes. uh, in the area? Because North Korea already has uh, great, great uh, examples the, uh, the they follow, uh, Israel, India, Pakistan. and. Everybody understands they have nuclear weapons. However, uh, just like Israel and uh, Pakistan, uh, no one talking about the elimination of nuclear weapons from those countries. The same thing, uh, North Korea uh, leader Kim Jong-un, he uh, is smart. He understands the geopolitics. And so using the relationship with Russia and China, uh, he believes uh, he can achieve his goal uh, by uh, diplomatic relationships with U.S. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, do you think that an uh, uh, ongoing conversation, say, between Washington, D.C. and Pyongyang could eventually 
yield a solution that everyone can live with? Uh, I think so, uh, but it will take time, and uh, it's not uh, uh, one year, two year. It should be a multi-year uh, journey. Mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. But I think the President Trump, uh, he showed his uh, uh, strength. And so by announcing uh, he will cancel the meeting uh, two weeks ago, and it made a North Korean leader uh, very upset and then begging uh, have to uh, op reopen the uh, communication with uh, the U.S. and also uh, via South Korea. Mm -hmm. So he immediately uh, called the South Korean president, uh, let's have a meeting tomorrow. So just one day in advance notice, mm -hmm. and they met, and then uh, South Korean leader and uh, North Korean uh, diplomats, they contact the U.S. Uh, State of Department and also uh, White House and all, and then President Trump uh, accept the request. And then after uh, negotiations and discussions, mm -hmm. uh, now the summit is going to be held in Singapore uh, one week from today. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I wish, as I was telling you before we went live on the air, I really wish that we could have had the summit somewhere in the United States. Honolulu would have been perfect, oh, perfect yeah. but virtually anywhere in the U.S. would be yeah. good, I think, because North Korea would bring their press, you know, their reporters and, and television crews, et cetera, and then the people would get to see the kinds of things that we have yeah. as citizens of a representative democracy. Yeah. And then they may want those kinds of things and say, gee, maybe democracy is, is better yeah. than the structure of government that, they, that I, we have uh, right now. Many of uh, the local uh, Korean Americans uh -huh. and also other uh, the citizens we believe uh, the meeting in Singapore, uh, the first meeting, but there will be additional meetings uh, probably in the U.S. and in North Korea. So mm -hmm, mm -hmm. probably the next meeting will be in uh, Honolulu, Hawaii, or West Coast. Mm -hmm. And then the next meeting probably somewhere in uh, maybe Pyongyang in North Korea. Uh, so visit by U.S. president, current president, not the former president. Mm -hmm. and then maybe uh, next meeting in Washington, D.C. Uh, so it's kind of uh, slowly opening the relationships. And also, I believe, uh, next week, a summit, uh, probably announcement of uh, rest restoration of diplomatic relationships. So U.S. Embassy in Pyongyang and North Korean Embassy in Washington, D.C., uh, very in the near future. Oh, good. So, so such a thing is possible sooner rather than later? Uh, I think sooner. And also yesterday I read the newspaper article, uh, it's a very interesting article. The North Korean leader Kim Jong-un uh, asked President Trump to uh, uh, help uh, the uh, casino, opening casinos in North Korea, and hotels and casinos in North Korea, mm -hmm. West Coast, mm -hmm. and it's kind of very interesting. And also uh, many reports last two weeks uh, probably uh, franchise the fast food restaurants in Pyongyang, just like McDonald's, Burger King, or uh, who knows, the Taco Bell's in <laughs> Pyongyang. And it's kind of, uh, I hope, uh, step by step, the okay. moving toward uh, normal relations and um, uh, peace, peace and uh, good future. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That really puts a new meaning to the phrase, make a run for the border. Yes. Uh, Taco Bell in North Korea. I just, I can't imagine it. Yeah, but President Trump, uh, two years ago, uh -huh. in, during the presidential uh, campaign, uh -huh. uh, I want to have uh, hamburgers with North Korean leader Kim Jong-un. Uh, so uh, discuss about the, uh, peace and uh, bright future mm -hmm. of our mm -hmm. countries. So I think it's happening now in uh, next week in Singapore and near future, uh, Pyongyang and Washington, D.C. Yeah, I think if, uh, they actually could have good hamburgers in Singapore. There's an excellent American burger restaurant <laughs> in the lobby of the Raffles Hotel. Wow. I've eaten there. Yeah. And the, the burgers are as good as anything you'd get anywhere in the U.S. Yeah. So, Mr. President, if you're watching, the lobby of the Raffles Hotel. Have a hamburger. Okay. So, um, but what about, there have also been some challenges, say, diplomatically. Yeah. Our president seems to be one who uh, 
gives people labels. Yes. So, uh, you know, during the campaign, we heard Crooked Hillary and Little yeah. Marco and mm -hmm. Lion Ted. And he's he's gone so far even to call uh, the leader of North Korea, Kim Jong-un, Little Rocket Man. Rocket Man. And that's got to be insulting. Okay. How, how long does, uh, do you think that uh, the Pyongyang government and uh, President Kim would uh, would consider that something that is offensive and 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 um, would that affect the way they would uh, approach diplomacy with the U.S.? I don't think so because uh, North Korean leaders, uh, the, uh, Kim Jong Un, and also his uh, people, uh, carefully uh, assessed uh, President Trump mm -hmm. and his negotiation styles and communication styles, and also all the past and present uh, challenges, and so they understand. Uh, uh, they can handle uh, meeting with President Trump, mm -hmm. and uh, they also believe uh, they can achieve their goal, and so more uh, it, uh, aid, the support from U.S., Japan, and uh, other countries, mm -hmm. including China. Mm -hmm. And also, it's just kind of a very smart uh, policy, the mm -hmm. diplomatic diplomacy, because uh, using the, uh, the relationships between U.S. and uh, China, Russia, mm -hmm. Japan, uh, North Korea, I believe, uh, divide and conquer or divide and uh, util, you know, use, uh, they believe they can get all what they want from uh, Russia, China, and U.S. and Japan. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. How, how willing uh, do you think the other neighbors in the region South Korea, China, Japan, and even Russia, to some ex uh, to some sense, mm -hmm. would uh, would be amenable to supporting, say, North Korea's agenda and advocating for it with the United States. At this time, uh, after the uh, organization change in South Korea uh, last year, uh, so sudden change, uh, and the current administration of South Korea uh, really wants to uh, have good relationship with. North Korea. Mm -hmm. The previous administration of uh, Kun Hae Park, the former uh, the president's daughter, uh, after the scandal, the political scandal, and she had to step down. But when she was a president, um, she uh, didn't have a good relationship with North Korea, mm -hmm. and strong uh, position against North Korea. And but the current president Moon Jae-in, uh, he's very. Uh, uh, peace oriented or uh, he believes uh, that his top priority is a uh, good relationship with North Korea. So that's why it, uh, he met with North Korean leader at Panmunjom, the DMZ, mm -hmm. uh, about one month ago. Mm -hmm. And so uh, I think uh, South Korea will sacrifice, that means uh, ready to provide all the uh, uh, support North Korea need. And also, even President Trump said uh, several days ago, uh, U.S. is not going to uh, spend uh, taxpayers' money. All the, uh, aid or support, economic support or aid, will come from uh, South Korea, Japan, and China. Because they are in the same area, they are close neighbors, so they have to support each other. And U.S., uh, we, the companies, the U.S. companies, We'll be glad to uh, we'll join uh, reconstructing their economy, the bad economy in North Korea. But mm -hmm. uh, President Trump promised uh, U.S. government is not going to spend uh, the taxpayers' money. Hmm. Well, we'll have to see about that. Yeah. Um, I just heard from the booth we need to take a station break. Yes. So we will be back in 60 seconds. So everyone stay with us. This is Working Together on Think Tech Hawaii. I'm Cheryl Crozier Garcia, and we will be back in one minute. I just walked by and I said, what's happening, guys? They told me they were making music. I 
so we do. Hi everyone, I'm Andrea Gabrieli. I'm the host for Young Talents Making Way here on FinTech Hawaii. We talk every Tuesday at 11 a.m. about things that matters to tech, matter to science, uh, to the people of Hawaii with some extraordinary guests. The students uh, of our schools who are participating in science fair. So Young Talents Making Way every Tuesday at 11 a.m. only on FinTech Hawaii. Mahalo. Welcome back to Working Together on Think Tech Hawaii. I'm Cheryl Crozier Garcia, and today we are talking to Dr. Dae Woo Park about the situation between the U.S. and North Korea and about what might need to happen in order to bring about uh, a more neighborly, more peaceful relationship. So thanks again for staying with us. Before we went to the break, Dae Woo, uh, you were talking about how President Trump said U.S. tax monies would not be uh, used to mm -hmm. uh, economically support North mm -hmm. Korea. Yeah. And it was President Trump's expectation that their neighbors would provide the financial resources. Yeah. So that would be Japan, China, South Korea, South Korea and maybe some minor support from other Russia. smaller countries, yes. Russia, et cetera, yeah. in the region. Do they have that kind of money? I mean, I because North Korea is not known to have the most modern infrastructure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There are or have been problems with, I mean, people simply getting enough to eat. Yes. So there are many social issues uh, but that it will take money to solve. And have they got that much money in the region? And according to the news uh, paper reports, news reports, uh, uh, Chinese prime minister or uh, Chinese uh, uh, leaders uh, promised they can uh, provide up to one hundred billion dollars to North Korea if Ooh. they. Uh, stop producing nuclear weapons, mm -hmm. and they uh, really um, change their direction. And also, Japan, in the past, about six, seven years ago, uh, they plan to provide uh, up to ten uh, billion dollars uh, as a compensation for their uh, Second World War, uh, the colonization, and mm -hmm. also the uh, damages and all others. And uh, so. I think uh, China and Japan, they have uh, money to help North Korea and also South Korea. Uh, some question mark about the future, but uh, the government has strong uh, commitment mm -hmm. uh, work to help North Korea. Mm -hmm. And that's, they believe that's the uh, direction for reunification uh, in the future. Yeah. Well, we do know historically uh, that the reunification of East and West Germany yes. uh, back in the in the '90s was a uh, was a difficult situation that worked out well in the end. And today, Germany has one of the most robust economies in yes. the EU. So, if history repeats itself, that we may see another uh, robust economy and a reunified yes. Korea really becoming a major player yeah. in, in that part of the world. That's what uh, President Trump uh, emphasized mm -hmm. uh, multiple times uh, to North Korean leaders. If you uh, decide uh, to dismantle the nuclear weapons and join us in uh, moving toward the peaceful world, then your future is, will be bright. That means uh, your country will be like uh, Manhattan in New York uh, last week. Uh, the Secretary of State, uh, Pompeius, he showed the skyline of Manhattan mm -hmm. to North Korean uh, delegate. And so this is kind of uh, your future. If you uh, decide to uh, go to go to the new directions. And, and I think uh, at this time in Asia, uh, China, Vietnam, uh, economic growth and uh, good economy. But North Korea, uh, they have good uh, human resource, and also they have natural resource, mm -hmm. and I think a uh, good, great opportunity. Mm -hmm. Well, I think it's good if that's what they want. I mean, if they if they want Pyongyang to look like Manhattan, then it's all good. But if they if they have a different vision yeah. for their future, mm -hmm. if bright future looks like something else to them, mm -hmm. I, I can't see them biting yeah. on that on the hook of. You can have all of this. Yeah. According to the news reports, uh, two weeks ago and last week, North Korea sent about 600 uh, government officers to China mm -hmm. 
<laughs> to uh, benchmark, to learn the Chinese uh, economic growth and miracle. So they sent, was sent to uh, Shanghai, Beijing, and Chengdu, and all the locations. And I think North Korea, uh, we have to see what will happen next week, the mm -hmm. summit between North Korea and U.S. But if they really decide to go along with the U.S. for peaceful world, uh, the future will be great, great uh, uh, for both countries. Right. Well, a, gro a growing economy is a good thing for the people that live in it. Uh, but it does provide challenges to the people that live outside it. So if, for example, North Korea were to move to kind of a manufacturing economy like what China has, yes. wouldn't there be then additional challenges for China, right? Because North Korea could come in with lower labor costs yes, and take yeah. business. And, and so we see this kind of circle of manufacturing yeah. jobs. Yeah. Yes. Uh, we, we saw it with Malaysia, Indonesia, and, uh, and Singapore in the 80s, and then again in the 90s with other locations throughout Asia yeah, where factories yeah, yes, are just yeah. coming up. So North Korea may be the next milestone yes. in, in, the, in the journey of manufacturing jobs around the world. Yeah. Do they have sufficient enough human capital to be able to The human compete? capital the side, I think they have uh, good human capital, but uh, the infrastructure side, uh, they are not. So that's why North Korea really asks or uh, want South Korea and China help to rebuild their infrastructures like uh, rail uh, systems and electricity and also uh, highways. Mm -hmm. And also uh, those money uh, will come from South Korea, Japan, and China. And then U.S. companies, uh, high-tech companies, and they can participate in uh, information highways or mm -hmm. internet systems and all uh, positively. And I'm uh, talking about the hacking or hackers by North Korea because they are so sophisticated and mm -hmm. uh, the very uh, headache for uh, Western countries. But uh, if they decide to go different direction, uh, it's great for the future, mm -hmm. uh, high technology and also uh, all the U.S. businesses and um, the future. Mm -hmm. Well, maybe we could use all of those North Korean hackers in Silicon Valley yes, yes. To, to develop anti-hacking yeah. technology. So it's change yeah. from hacking to uh, artificial intelligence sure. or hacking to uh, some smart uh, uh, technology uh, utilize, use, uh -huh, uh, uh -huh. our future will be much better. Yeah, that's true. And I imagine they could have they could do a lot of good with um, increasing uh, medical technologies of different yes, kinds, yes. Uh, screening devices and other kinds of things that would help to diagnose diseases yeah, early and yeah. things like that. And, and that's, those are the kinds of skills. The skills the hacker has can be used yeah. in, in many different directions. Yeah. So it might be a good thing if we can convince them to turn their skills yeah. to to creating new technologies instead of hacking my social security yeah. number. So next week we will see uh, President Trump and North Korean leader Kim Jong Un uh -huh. uh, eat hamburger together and uh, conversation. Uh, it will be very very interesting. Mm -hmm. What will happen? Speaking of which, what role would um, uh, President Kim is married? Yes. What role would his wife play? in any kind of diplomatic mission like this? Because this, this is Trump usually comes yes, along. Yes. Yeah. I heard uh, the uh, wives of uh, President Trump and Kim Jong-un not join uh, them in Singapore. Oh. So they are going to stay in uh, Washington, D.C. and Pyongyang. Uh -huh. uh, but maybe uh, the second meeting or third meeting in the future, uh, you, we will see uh, the uh, first ladies of uh, U.S. and North Korea yeah. uh, will join. And, uh, that actually might be a good thing, because I can really see Mrs. Trump being an asset yes. when it comes yes. to tact and diplomacy. Yes. She's multilingual. She's yes. traveled yes. all around the world. But breaking the history, uh, breaking the past, right. uh, the North Korean leader, when he traveled to China, uh -huh. and also when he met with uh, South Korean leader uh, two weeks ago, uh -huh. uh, 
uh, he brought, uh, introduced his wife to Chinese leaders and South Korean leader. Uh -huh. So first time, uh, the president the, the, and uh, the first lady, uh, North Korea and South Korea, and North Korea and China, mm -hmm. they met, they had uh, state dinners together, and it's kind of a uh, big change. Good. Ch change is necessary. Yes. If, if we're going to have success with this thing. What about, um, can you tell us whatever it is that you know about President Kim's sort of history? He is one of the few world leaders, I think, that wasn't educated in the United States, I think. He didn't go to U.S. University. Uh, he spent uh, seven years, of, I think, uh, seven years in Switzerland. So oh, in Switzerland. He can speak German, he can speak English, uh -huh. and his favorite, uh, uh, the basketball player, uh, he brought Dennis to China, Rodman. Dennis Rodman, <laughs> and he likes the uh, Red Chaplin, the the Western singers' music songs, and so uh, he understand both uh, Asian and uh, Western uh -huh. uh, culture, and also he understand how to negotiate, how to bargain, how to uh, communicate with. Uh, Western leaders, including mm -hmm. President Trump. Well, that's good. I hope President Trump has similar knowledge, because otherwise it's going to be an uneven yes, negotiation. Yes. Yeah. Well, we've got just one minute left. So, Dr. Day Wu Park, thank you for taking the time to be with us today and to help us understand the situation uh, that's happening all around us that ultimately will affect. Yeah the way we live life on a day-to-day -day basis. I, I like the idea of having more friends rather than more enemies, yes. you know? Um, the world isn't nearly as big as we presume it to be. It's possible to have breakfast in Honolulu and then dinner in Seoul. Our shrinking globe makes it critical that we learn to work and play well with others, especially those with whom we disagree about governance models and national politics. Not every nation believes that representative democracy is the right model of government for their people. But that doesn't mean we can't look for areas of agreement that will help both nations build cooperative relationships that support the growth of both countries. Trash talking and schoolyard bullying do nothing to enhance relationships between countries. The U.S. has among its friends and allies nations with many different kinds of government structures. There isn't any reason why North Korea can't be one of those friends. Ultimately, such a relationship would help to ensure peace in the region and in the world. That's all the time we have today. On behalf of all of the citizen journalists here at Think Tech Hawaii, I'm Cheryl Crozier Garcia saying we'll be back with another episode of Working Together in two weeks. Till then, take care and happy birthday to my sister Michelle and my husband Jaime. I love you both, see you soon.